it's Belle. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video is going to be my June TBR. Books I want to get to that were sent to me. I hope this isn't all I read for the month that were sent to me, but just to name some. I read the Goddess Girls graphic novels that were sent to me by Joan Holub. So now I want to re read the Heroes in Training graphic novel. And I've read the synopsis of these before on here, so I'm not going to read it again. But it's created by Joan Holub and Suzanne Williams, adapted by David Campiti. One. Zeus and the Thunderbolt of Doom. And Poseidon and the Sea of Fury. And I really enjoyed the Goddess Girls ones, so I'm really looking forward to getting to these. Next novel will be The Pack, The Dare, and The Draugr by TJ Hendricks. And the author sent me this. Thank you so much. I'm excited to get to these. Soon. After I finished Keeper of the Lost Cities, I started the Serafina series by Robert Betty. Or Beatty. And so I finished the first book and loved it. And so this is the second book. I'm really loving it and I know the Biltmore Estate and so it's just, I love the connection and the historical fiction aspect and just everything about it. It's dark up the middle gray and I'm loving it. Since I finished our shoot, our Shaw books, even though they were longer series too, um, the next one I'm gonna start is Agatha Audley by Lena, Lena Jones. And this is The Secret Key, this is the first book. There's someone right at my alley. Detective mystery style. Has these forever and I really want to start them. This might be pushing it a little, but. <laughs> the next three series are also like that detective mystery style middle grade that um, I've all, I've had all of these forever and I want to get to them. Uh, the Rose Campion ser series by Lynn Gardner. First book is Rose Campion and the Stolen Secret. What links a mysterious burial, burial on a desolate moor with a lively London music hall? Murder, that's what. Rose Campion is an orphan, but the performers at Campion's are like family to her. So when Ned Dorset, a brilliant young actor, goes missing, Rose and her friends go get on the case. It will take them on a murky journey where nothing is as it seems, and a wrong step can lead to a watery grave. Set against a colorful theatrical backdrop, this tale of murder among the grease paint will keep you hooked until the very last act. That sounds so good, I'm so excited. And then the newest book of this one just came out. It's the third or fourth, and I have it on the way to me. But A Girl Called Justice, and this is by Ellie Griffiths. And these are quicker. Meet Justice Jones. Super smart by day, super sleuth by night. She's always on the lookout for mystery. On Justice's first day of boarding school, it's clear there's plenty of investigating to do. Why do blondes rule the corridors? Who made the uniform such a sh charming shade of brown? And do teachers normally hide dangerous secrets about the murder of a chambermaid. When a deadly snowstorm cuts everyone off from the outside world, the body count starts to rise. Can justice find the killer before it's too late? So many things I'm loving. A boarding school, and then the detective mystery and murder aspect, and then cut off in the world in a snowstorm. I'm so excited. And then the Poppy Pym series, Poppy Pym and the Pharaoh's Curse by Laura Wood. Step right up for mind mending magic, deep dark mysteries, and a lion wearing a mustache. You might think that after growing up in a traveling circus, going to boarding school would be boring, but not for me, Poppy Pym. In fact, here at St. Smithers, a mystery is afoot. An ancient Egyptian ruby has gone on display, and suddenly dangerous accidents start happening. Is the ruby cursed, or is it something or someone else? It's up to me to be a top sleuth and solve the case, with a little help from my pals. Another boarding school. Yay. And then another trilogy that I want to read that I've had forever is The Curiosity House by Lauren Oliver and H.C. Chester. It's the Shrunken Head. I love these covers so much. The illustrations. Blessed with extraordinary abilities, orphans Philip, Philippa, Sam, and Thomas have grown up happily in Dumfries Dime Museum of Freaks, Oddities, and Wonders. But when a fourth child, Max, a knife thrower, joins the group, it sets off an unforgettable chain of events. When the museum's Amazonian Shrunken Head is stolen, the four are determined to get it back. But their search leads them to a series of murders and an explosive secret about their past. More investigating and mystery, so excited. And the next longer series that I want to start when I get through the Seraphina, The Books of Elsewhere by Jacqueline West. I love what I've read of hers. And I can't wait to get to this because it sounds so good and I've had it forever. First book is The Shadows. There's something spooky about Olive's new house. When 11-year-old Olive moves into the old house on Linden Street, she knows there's something weird about the place. The creepy antique paintings, three very unusual cats. 
But the weirdest thing, when Olive finds and puts on a pair of old glasses, she can travel inside the paintings to elsewhere, a sinister world with strange secrets to keep. Soon Olive finds herself caught in a dark and dangerous plan. Can she confront the powers in the house that will want to get rid of her and her family before the lights go out for good? Everything about that. Just so excited. Then there's a couple of duologies, or if they're not duologies, all that's out right now is two books that I want to get to. This, so the Pixie Piper ones by Annabelle Fisher. The first one is The Secret Destiny of Pixie Piper. Chapter head illustrations. And the second book is Pixie Piper and the Matter of the Batter. <laughs> A tisket, a tasket, a goose, and a basket. Your heart holds a question, and now you must ask it. Pixie Piper doesn't believe in fortunes, good or bad. All Pixie wants is to be nor a normal fifth grader, not some poetry whiz kid, and live in a normal house, not in a cottage shaped like an acorn, with a normal family, not hers. And although Pixie really likes her neighbor and her best friend Gray, he's a boy, but they're practically grew up together. It would be great to be invited to Sage's house to play with Angel, Sage's new puppy. But play dates with Sage and her golden retriever puppy are not Pixie's destiny. And truth be told, Pixie has always suspected she was a little different, especially in the poetry department. But even Pixie Piper couldn't have guessed exactly how amazingly, magically different she is. It sounds so different, and I just think I'm really going to love this. A lot of these I've had forever, except for some of these newer releases that I have in here. And then the Henry and Ava, Ava books by Andrea Cortez. First book is Henry and Ava, and then Castle of, on the Cliff. Henry and Eva and the famous People's Ghosts. Prominent environmentalist and oceanographer die in boating accident. This is the headline that changes Henry and Eva's lives forever. Their parents, prominent environmentalist William Billings, age 43, and his oceanographer wife, Margot, age 39, disappear mysteriously at sea. This is a very, very bad day indeed. But for Henry and Eva, things are about to get worse. Their jerk-faced uncle, Claude the Claude, and his awful girlfriend, Terry the Terrible, have moved into their big house on the cliff to take care of them. But Eva has her doubts about their intentions. And when some spooky visitors appear with a message, Henry and Eva realize that their parents' deaths might not have been as cut and dried as everyone thinks. And this brother and sister team and their group of ghastly, ghostly graveyard friends uncover the truth before it's too late. Ghastly, ghostly graveyard friends. Yes, please. Just Butterfly Hill, maybe, because they both have that in the title. But the first book is I Lived on Butterfly Hill, a novel by Marjorie... Eggleston, illustrated by Lee White. Beautiful. Next one, The Maps of Memory, Return to Butterfly Hill. 11-year-old Celeste Marconi is a dreamer, a writer, a collector of words, but then a new whispered word trickles into her life, subversives. Her beloved country of Chile has been taken over by a military dictatorship, and subversive people considered a threat to the new government are in, increasing, are in increasing danger. Celeste's doctor parents must go in hiding and remain safe, and Celeste's heart sick must say goodbye to them. But the situation continues to worsen. More and more people are disappearing, and soon Celeste herself is sent thousands of miles away, all the way to the coast of Maine, where she doesn't have a single friend or know a word of English. How can she possibly call it another country, a country where people eat breakfast out of a box, where the cold grays of winter mirror the fears that envelop her home? Will she ever see Chile again? And if she does, what and who will she find there? It sounds like it's going to be such a heartwarming, maybe heartbreaking story, but mm, just time for a while. I want to get to one. Continue with some mysteries. The Amelia Six by Kristen L. Gray. Adventure is worthwhile in itself. Amelia Earhart. 11-year-old Amelia Ashford, Millie to her friends, if she had any, that is, doesn't realize just how much adventure awaits her when she's given the opportunity of a lifetime to spend the night in Amelia Earhart's childhood home with five other girls. But Millie's mom is a pilot, like the famous Amelia, and Millie would love to have something to write to her about, if only she had her address. Once at Amelia's house in Atchison, Kansas, Millie stumbles upon a display of Amelia's famous flight, go flight goggles. She can't believe her good luck, since they're about to be relocated to a fancy museum in Washington, D.C. But her luck changes when the goggles disappear, and Millie was the last to see them. Soon fingers are pointing in all directions, and someone falls strangely ill. Suddenly, a fun night of scavenger hunts and sweets takes a nosedive, and the girls aren't sure who to, tr who to trust. With a blizzard raging outside and a house full of suspects, the girls have no choice but to band together. It's up to Amelia Six to find the culprit and return the goggles to their rightful place, where the next body to collapse could be one of theirs. It's an interesting idea for a story, and I'm very excited to get it up. The Way to Rio Luna by Zoraida Cordova. 
Magic is waiting. All you have to do is believe. 11 year old Danny Monteverde believes in magic. He believes that fairy dust is real, that wardrobes act as portals, and that rabbit holes lead to, lead to Wonderland. Most of all, he believes that his older sister, Healy, is waiting for him somewhere in Rio Luna, the enchanted land in their favorite book of fairy tales. Danny doesn't care what the adults say. He knows that Healy isn't another teen runaway. When the siblings were placed in separate foster homes, she promised that she'd come back for him and they'd build a new life together in Rio Luna. Yet as the years pass, Danny's faith begins to dim, but just when he thinks it might be time to put foolish fairy tales behind him, he finds a mysterious book in the library. It's a collection of stories that contain hints about how to reach another world, a map to Rio Luna, and to Pilly. As his adventure takes him from New York to Ecuador to Brazil, Danny learns that meeting your favorite characters isn't always a dream come true, but nothing will stop him from finding his sister, even if it means standing up to the greatest threat the magical realm has ever known. So intrigued by that. It sounds so incredible. And then I'd like to read The Runaways of Haddington Hall by Vivian French. Welcome to Haddington Hall. Mind your manners, do exactly as you're told, and don't forget, laughter is expressly forbidden. Oh, and enjoy your stay. After a series of misfortunes, Minnie O'Sullivan is whisked away to Haddington Hall, a nightmare's home for where we girls. Bad becomes worse when the hall's ruthless founder, Mrs. Haddington, takes an instant dislike to brave, determined Minnie, and she's in danger of losing everything. But Minnie has never backed down from a fight in her life, and she's not about to start now. Sounds so good. And The Secret of Haven Point by Lisette Otto. I was Haven Point's first reckling, but I certainly wasn't the last. There are 42 of us now, not including the mermaids. Since Alpha Lux first washed up there as a baby, Haven Point has become a ramshackle home for any disabled person who needs somewhere to belong. Named after the way they make a living on the wild shore, the recklings spend their days looting from passing ships, with a little magical help from a mermaid clan and a lighthouse keeper with a kitten in his beard. But beyond the boundaries of Haven Point, danger lurks. It's only a matter of time before the Recklings are forced to decide what kind of future they want and what they're willing to do to get it. So many things that I love about that synopsis and has me very excited, so can't wait to get to this. And then I've had this forever. I remember I got it at a Barnes & Noble right before the pandemic. It became a worry, even in our minds. Uh, the Inquisitor's Tale, or The Three Magical Children and Their Holy Dog, by Adam Gidwitz. Gidwitz. And it says Newbery Honor Book. And it's like illustrations on like the corners every now and then. They're different. The king is ready for war. He is not fighting another army. He is not fighting another king. He is fighting three children and their dog. On a dark night in 1242, travelers gather in a small French inn. It is the perfect night for a story, and everyone in the kingdom is consumed by the tale of three children. Jean, a peasant girl who, was, who has visions of the future, William, a young monk with supernatural strength, and Jacob, a Jewish boy who can heal anyone. The other other powers will be tested by demons and dragons, cruel knights, cunning monks. From small villages to grand banquet halls, these three unlikely friends and their faithful greyhound are chased through France to a final showdown in the waves at the foot of the Abbey Fortress of Mont Saint Michael. Very excited to finally read this. And then The Bird Singers by Eve Wasaki Morris. So beautiful. At first, Leia thought it was a bird song, a high, thin sound, rising and falling, and each night it returned. Strange things are happening to Leia and her sister a peculiar whistling in their lonely cottage, a handful of unusual feathers, murmurings of a shadow in the forest, and Mom is acting oddly. Leia's head is full of old myths and fairy tales from her Polish grandma, Baksha. As she starts to uncover dark secrets, she realizes there's a chance these myths might be real. Time is running out to solve the mystery. How far will Leia go to save her family? So excited. And lastly, another one I've had forever, The Glass Town Game by Catherine M. Valente. I have so many of her books and I want to read them. Inside a small Yorkshire parsonage, Charlotte, Bronwell, Emily, and Anne Bronte have invented a game called Glasstown, where their toy soldiers fight Napoleon and no one dies. This make-believe land helps the poor escape from a harsh reality. Charlotte and Emily are being sent away to a dangerous boarding school, but then something incredible happens. A train whisks them all the way to the real Glasstown, and the children trade the moors for a wonderland all their own. This is their Glasstown, exactly like they envisioned it, almost. They certainly never gave Napoleon a fire-breathing porcelain rooster instead of a horse. All their soldiers can die. Wars are fought over the potion that raises the dead. When Anne and Bronwyn are kidnapped, Charlotte and Emily must find a way to save their siblings. Can
and two English girls stand against Napoleon and the army. And if he escapes Glass Town, will England ever be safe again? I'm so intrigued by this. It just sounds so. Just, ugh. Alright, that's it. As usual, this is a possibility read. So, these are the ones I'll possibly read, and any books that I haven't gotten to that were in other possibility reads video are still contenders too, and even ones I haven't mentioned if I see them and I just want to read them. I'm just a mood reader, so. So, have you read any of these? Did you like them? Did you not? Did you see some that you're now excited about? Let me know in the comments. I hope you enjoyed the video. Today's shirt is Johnny Depp from the movie Cry Baby, one of my favorites. I felt it was fitting since the celebrating a victory for truth and if you'd like to subscribe i would love that if you'd like to and i'll see you in my next video bye